Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we're going to be taking a look at these Top Sky watch. This is the newest FPV watch currently in the market. And as far as I know, there's only basically, I think two, but there could be more, which is the G Tang and also the Top Sky. They're both around exactly the same price. However, with the Top Sky, you're actually getting quite a lot more, to be honest. And um, it would be the obvious choice for most. And let's get into this. First, let's start with the aesthetics. Then we'll go in and talk about the uh, modability. Uh, some of the extra features that this thing offers and just the overall package here so as you can tell both of the screens are exactly the same size now when you boot it up what i've noticed is i can actually see the pixels on the top sky watch so i might say that the g-tank has better pixel density out of the box we'll, we'll try to see that in a bit and also another thing to take note of is that the G-Tang is slightly brighter, but the colors are more washed out than the Top Sky here. The Top Sky here has, you know, just better saturation. You get to see all the colors. And uh, in bright light, this kind of just washes out almost everything. It's kind of, it just like has a bit too much brightness and not a lot of contrast. Now, if we take a look at the plastic here, this one is like, you know, toy grade plastic. Just, you know, anything that's usually plastic, even the color is toyish, but it still gets the job done. And it has the built-in antenna here. However, this one, they're using a really soft, nice plastic that will, seems like it's going to take a hit. Now, if you take a closer look here, you see that I've already kind of damaged it. But that is uh, my stupidity because I'm trying to take this apart to set up a DVR mod for this and some other mods as well. But um, it's actually, I, I still can't figure out how to open either of these without actually breaking them. So I really just, uh, I need some extra time. So what I did is I removed these screws. I tried to put this in and turn this over and that's the damage that you saw here. So this did not come like that out of the box. Now out of the box you might say, oh my god, look how scratched it is. But this is actually a, uh, as you can tell right there, it is actually a screen protector. So that's really good. Uh, I'm planning on keeping that there until, you know, the day it comes off here. Now in terms of channels, you get more channels on the Top Sky than you do on the G-Tang. You get the uh, R-Band and as well as you get the L-Band uh, on the Top Sky. But on the G-Tang here, you only get A, B, E, and F. And channels obviously one through eight so the bands you get more bands more channels on the top sky here now in terms of buttons and ease of access they both actually work exactly the same so they're somewhat of the same hardware but not really and why do i say that well let's talk about the charging mechanism now with the g tang here we had a proprietary uh charging cable which was basically one like one of those 1s usb uh lipo chargers if you've seen them but at the other end it has a U micro usb in order to charge it so it does not have a built-in charging circuit so we had to use that proprietary uh usb cable in order to charge the g-tang here now for the top sky it does have a proper uh charging circuit built inside so you can use any usb cable you'd like with any wall charger which is something really nice and as you can tell here it's going to be really difficult for you to see this but we can see that this is slightly brighter but again it's more washed out and here we're getting a lot more uh, contrast and more saturation basically than on the g-tang uh but you know and again you're not really meant to fly with these you can but it's that's not what they're meant for it's usually for like pre-flight checks check if you got your gps locks make sure you're uh, VTX is working, your OSD is how you want it. Uh, these are the, this is the type of thing, this is, this is not really a necessity, but it's something that's really nice to have. And the batteries last for quite a while if you're doing just pre-flight checks and all these types of things. They both have 300 milliamp batteries. Now, I have not opened it to double check that, but we're going to see that in a later video when I mod one of these two, but I'm going towards modding this one because um, it just looks easier and it has better options as well. Now, like I mentioned, the antenna on the G-Tang is already built in. And uh, you can actually access it. And let me just uh, remember how to pull this guy out because it's kind of uh, counterintuitive sometimes. You can tell here's the antenna. So it just, you know, it's just a dipolar antenna, which you can also open up and just reslot a different antenna. However, here, they provide you with an MMCX port, as you can tell right there, which is really nice. Now, if you are planning on getting an antenna for this, which is an MMCX antenna, there's a lot of them in the market currently that uh, allow you to put all kinds of crazy cool things. Like, uh, for example, this one here, you can get the mushrooms, whatever you want. They do come in MMCX, but get it right angle. That's why they also have this little clip here, because if you get a, just a, you know, a straight flush one like this, it's just going to be hanging. So just keep that in mind also. And it's working without antenna here locally or right next to me because the quad's right next to me. So it really doesn't really need an antenna if you're going to be doing these uh, very close pre-flight checks. However, saying that it also does come with a antenna. Now, I think this is one of the only things that Top Sky got right. Unfortunately, even though they're trying to get a lot of things right with their uh, FPV goggles, but this one, I think they, they, they did a really great job on. And uh, I can see my, actually I'm using both of these. So yeah, it's something very useful to have. 
Now, in terms of uh, channel switching, you have a bus a special button for each. You also do have auto search. Auto search isn't always the best on anything basically. But what's really nice, as you can tell here, we don't have any LED indicator to tell us what channel we're on, but it does have an OSD as you can tell right here, or it's gonna be kind of a little bit difficult for you to tell unless I cover it up like that. Can you see that? So right now I'm changing channels. You can see frequency A and the channel is eight. And uh, it also gives us the frequency here, which is really nice because not always A7 equals that, you know, that frequency on a lot of VTXs. So that's something really nice here. On the other hand, where we get an LED indicator, which just gives us A, B, E and F and channels one through eight. So we have we have more. We have two more bands on the Top Sky watch here. So overall, it's a really nice watch. It's going to be modded here on the channel. And um, you can somewhat see the pixels. It's really difficult, especially with the current camera. I'll try to possibly take a picture of this with my uh, smartphone because I can zoom in a lot more. And uh, here's just a kind of a better representation. It, you know, the camera is not going to do it justice here. Um, but I would say the G Tang uh, LCD is about 10, 15% brighter. And the colors, you know, wherever there's a lot of light, it's you, you really lose a lot of detail where there's a lot of light like that. As you can tell here, you can still see just about everything that's going on here. It gets a little bit more difficult to see because I think they've just increased the brightness and not put enough contrast And here. I think they've put a bit too much contrast, but maybe there's a way to actually modify this or edit it. If we take it apart, maybe do a little hack once I figure out how to properly take this apart, because I really do not want to break this thing because it's really nice. Now, another extra feature that this adds, which is a mount for it. And let me show you this mount. It's pretty crazy. Actually, I didn't know what it was in the beginning. So they, they give you this little mounting bracket, which is a really, really nice addition. And what this does here, is it will actually connect in the back. So if you ever remove these and you can, they also give you a spare set of Velcros here to uh, to put it basically on your transmitter or something else if you just wanted to hang it as just a tiny little screen. So it can be used for a lot of things. It just doesn't have to be a watch, but the watch is just one form factor. Now on the picture they show, they give you that really nice USB cable, but that's bullshit. They don't do that. At least for mine, they didn't do that. What I got is just a really basic cheap USB dirty white cable, but that's fine. I don't really care because uh, it's not proprietary and I'm not going to be using that anyways. So what this allows you to do is to give you an extra piece. So you could put this maybe on your, you know, your transmitter or your RC. Yeah, your RC transmitter. And then uh, this will connect in like this, but it's actually a pain to actually remove this. As you can tell, that would connect like that. And then you could just, uh, you know, put this wherever you want here. So yeah, it'll be really good. And you can remove these straps if you wanted to. Taking it apart is a bit of a pain, but you can get it out. Uh, it's actually, I'm quite surprised that it's not really scratching this uh, this case. This is really nice material. I, I truly do like this material that is on the watch here. I wish some of our transmitters come with this material. And as you can tell, I basically popped off the pin here. So I just gotta be extra careful with that. Um, yeah, it was a bit too rough. So yeah, when you do that, just be extra careful. I mean, they're not obviously, they're not super durable, but yeah, as you can tell right there, I just popped that off, but that should be fine for now. I can fix it and they do give you with one dipolar antenna here so you can easily just put that in and that'll hold it with you know just keep it straight up here so that's really nice so uh yeah it's just a huge nice addition so and again just use the right angle mmcx if you're going to get an antenna for this get a right angled one and what's really nice you can also set mmcx to like an sma and put whatever antenna you want here so as you can tell we can also just do that stick that in there and put any other antenna we wanted to and um you could kind of get a good reference of how well this is going to perform now we'll be testing the receiver sensitivity which means long range uh the longer the range we're able to get on a lower milliwatt with these two having them you know at the exact same i'll use the dipolar into this dipolar antenna just as this one because this one's also a dipolar and we can see the receiver sensitivity based upon that we can also know which has the better penetration but penetration will also come down to the antenna but again if we get good distance uh that means it has a better the the receiver is better in sensitivity now the sensitivity is very important because uh here's a, a nice little reference uh nasa when they send a satellite that's like a million miles away they're outputting around uh, 20 watts, I think, 20 watts, or if not more, 20 watts of power. But by the time it receives Earth, it's like point eleven zeros one of a watt. And and just it's all about the receiver's uh, sensitivity and how good it is at uh, avoiding noise and, 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 and being able to encode that information to something that's very understandable. So that will give us a good representation, if that even matters to anybody. But this is meant for like pre-flight checks. And it's really nice if you lose a quad, you can kind of walk around with this and it saves your goggles battery or your screen's battery. And it's, it's very useful all around, at least for me, in my opinion. 
And um, overall, it's a nice little watch. There's nothing to complain about. It works out of the box. I just wish the uh, screen was a little bit brighter. That's one thing. Also, I think the resolution is slightly better on the G Tang, but I could be wrong. This is it just I could see the pixels kind of. Uh, it's not really that bad, but again, you're not going to be using this to fly much. And um, overall, it's a nice little watch. If you wanted to see a video of it, here it is. It's it's a pretty good one. Uh, they've gone. They like I mentioned, they got a couple things right. For example, that charging circuit, so you don't need a proprietary uh, charging USB cable. Because if you lose this one, you're not going to be able to really charge it because there's no uh, you know lipo charging circuit or hardware inside of the G Tang. But here they did that proper. And also the overall build construction and the build quality and the materials they've used are really nice. And this is actually starting to get kind of warm here. And it is to be expected from receivers. Um, so overall, it's a nice little watch. There's nothing to really complain about. I just really want to mod this at a DVR. And maybe we can do some other mods to this. Probably even set up a diversity mod. But that will be kind of trippy. I'll explain that in a later video. Um, and well, that's it guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll have links to both of these down below if you want to go ahead and check them out. If you can use those links, those greatly support the channel, keep the channel afloat. And I also do have a Patreon if you like my content, you consider joining my Patreon. And well, that's it guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.